you, Jesus. We will sing of your goodness day and night, oh God, because you're a good man, God. You are a good God. You save us day by day, my God. We can only stand in awe and look at your goodness, oh God, Jesus. The things that are happening around us, oh God, we can only say all our days, you have been good to us, oh God. And still today, here you are good, oh God. You are a good God, Lord. And we are honored to serve you as our Lord and our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We give you all the praise and the honor for you deserve it. Thank you, Lord.
nothing in his whole world, nothing is above you, O oh God. Who can stand against you, O oh God? Because you are with us, O oh God. We have nothing to fear in this whole universe. We have nothing to fear in this world, O oh God, because you are with us. Thank you, Lord, for being with your children in these dark days that we are in. Thank you for being with your children. Thank you for your assurance that you will never leave nor forsake us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us in the days that we are in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We have nothing to fear. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
counting on, I'm counting on God. I'm counting on, I'm counting on God. I'm counting on, I'm counting on God. Hallelujah. Do you count on God? Do you count on God for your problems, for your children? in the name of Jesus. Uh, what a great joy for us to come and just fellowship together with one another. I'm so glad for the praise and worship that has taken place and I believe that you have been blessed. I believe that God has spoken in your life and uh, in this particular season we just have to spend time in the presence of God and just bask in his, in his grace and just enjoy the fullness of his goodness. Now you got to understand that we are living in a very difficult time, times that we cannot predict, times that we cannot explain exactly what we are dealing with uh, in this particular instance. Uh, so uh, as you all may be aware, we have been put on lockdown, Okaanja, uh, Rehoboth, and Vinduk, we are locked down. And, uh, but the presence of God is not locked down. I always say that because I believe that uh, even through this stream, God can touch your life. God can move in your life. God can move in your family. And uh, uh, so we, we are not in the wrong place. We are at a place where God wants us to be at this particular moment. I want to welcome our churches from all across Namibia, Southern Africa, and all over the world. There are some that are connecting with us from Oshakati, Ondangwa, Ludret, Kietmanshop, 
Vinduk, uh, Roshpina, wherever you are, wherever you are connecting from, I believe that uh, God has a word for you and God wants to do something in your life in this particular moment. So uh, I'm going to take off uh, with what God has put upon my heart and that is a word on trusting God in the midst of the pandemic. Trusting God in the midst of the pandemic. I believe that uh, in this time in which we are living today, many people are undergoing through trauma, chaos, and confusion. And I want to focus on uh, uh, these three words, trauma, chaos, and confusion. Uh, so many are traumatized because of what is happening. Others have tested positive. Others are in hospital. Others are in ICU right now as we speak. And others have died. And others have lost their loved ones. So we, in one way or the other, are experiencing trauma. There is chaos. There is sorts of chaotic uh, occurrences taking place and there is confusion. We're finding ourselves at a place where we are saying, I don't know uh, what to do. I don't know what is going on. Uh, should I take the vaccine? Should I uh, just continue to isolate myself? So there is a lot of confusion and these are some of the things that I want to answer on today. And I want to answer these things with the word of God. I want to answer based on what the Lord says. In other words, wherever you are, you may be saying, what is God saying in these instances? What is God saying of what is happening with the trauma, with the chaos, with the confusion that is happening? People are in panic mood. People are panicking, running, because they don't know how to deal with some of these things. And then there are also another set of people that are taking these things so lightly. They're not taking them serious. There is Corona, yes, so what? And uh, they continue partying. They continue to do uh, the things that uh, they've been doing, clubbing and all that. But you must understand that we are living in very difficult times, times that everyone has to wake up, including young people that think that uh, they are safe, they can go and contract COVID and bring it in their homes and uh, make their family sick. So you must wake up and understand that we are de dealing with something that is very serious and something that is very uh, detrimental. We must understand that God gives us many uh, reassuring promises in his word and these promises are of peace and restoration. God wants to bring peace in our homes, in our lives, and also wants to bring restoration bringing things back to the way they are supposed to be, uh, restoring peace that has been taken. We are not at peace. You are afraid every time that you wake up in the morning, you see somebody has died, you see somebody has died, and you begin to ask yourself, when, who is next? Who is next? And uh, these are thoughts uh, that are running in our minds, but God wants to bring peace and restoration. All right? Uh, so, uh, though there are current hardships and sufferings that we may be facing right now, we must understand that that uh, hope is found in Scripture. Hope is found in Scripture. And the truth is God's grace endures. God's grace endures. In other words, God continues to endure. His grace continues to endure in your life and in every place where you're finding yourself. We need to stand on the unchanging promises of God's word. We need to stand on the unchanging promises of God's word. In other words, the word of God stands sure. The word of God does not change change, it continues to stand sure even in your life, in your circumstance, and in everywhere you're finding yourself. So let's take off with uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Uh, the Bible says, if you are there, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So here the Bible says, and the question that I'm posing today is, what do you do uh, in the midst of the pandemic? Or how do you keep your faith in the midst of the pan pandemic? I want you to know that God is faithful. And in Hebrews verse 23, 10, chapter 10 verse 23, the Bible says let us hold fast. In other words, let us hold on to the confession of the hope without wavering. Okay, so the times are hard, the times are difficult, so what do we do? We're going to hold on to faith, we're going to hold on to hope, we're going to hold on to the confession that we have, and that is the confession that uh, God is on the throne, God is faithful, the one that has called us, the one that has promised us, he is faithful. And I want you to know that God is faithful even when things are going so bad, even when things are so complicated, God is faithful, and he wants to show 
show himself strong. He wants to show himself strong in the midst of the turbulences and the challenges and the problems that we are going through. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. In other words, our hope is in God. Our hope is in the living God. Our hope is in what God has promised in his word. Are you going to panic? Are you going to give up? Yes, there is trauma. Yes, there is chaos. There is confusion. But as a child of God, I'm not going to be moved by the chaotic circumstances. I'm not going to be moved by the uh, traumatic situations. I'm not going to be moved by the confusion. I'm going to stand on what the word of God says, and I'm going to hold on to hope. I'm going to hold on to faith. Many people today are losing faith. They are losing their faith in God. And I want you to know that that's what the devil wants to do, to make people lose their faith. And God wants us to hold on. Those that would hold on to faith, they will be able to see the power of God manifesting in their lives, manifesting in every circumstance of their lives. Child of God, wherever you are, whatever is happening, I want to challenge you as Hebrews 10.23 says, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. In other words, even in the midst of the pandemic, we will continue to confess that I am healed, I am protected, I am blessed, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. The devil wants me to confess negative, but I shall confess positive. I shall confess that the Lord God is with me. I shall confess that the Lord God is watching over my life. And where you are watching from, I want you to know that as you hold on to the faith, God's hand is fastened over your life. God is, God's hand is over your family, and you are protected, you are covered to know that God is with you. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, the Bible says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who, who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. So what is the Bible telling us? In the midst of trouble, in the midst of problems, in the midst of difficulties, be strong and courageous. Child of God, begin to find the strength in God. Begin to turn out to be strong in God. Find courage in the midst of panic, in the midst of chaotic, in the midst of uh, uh, confusion, you find strength in God and you find the courage in God. The Bible says, do not fear or be dread of them. Be dread of who? Be dread of all these overwhelming circumstances, all these things that are befalling us in one way or the other. Someone is going through difficulties today in one way or the other. Maybe it's, it may not be the pandemic. It may be maybe finances. It may be maybe delinquence of your children. It may be whatever challenges that you find yourself into. God is saying, do not fear. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. We have an assurance in the word of God that God will go with us. God will go ahead of us. I have seen friends that are saying, oh, now we are reduced to 10. We'll only be able to meet 10. I want you to know that yes, physically people may meet 10, but in your house and in another house and in another house we form a strong army. We form a body. We form the family of God coming together, spending time in the presence of God. And we know that God has promised us that he will be with us. He will not leave us nor forsake us. Child of God, you are not alone. You are not forsaken. You are not abandoned. In that isolation word, in that quarantine, I want you to know that you are not forsaken. You are not all by yourself. The Lord God is with you. The Lord God is standing right with you, ensuring that you experience his presence and ensuring that you experience his power. Child of God, I came to challenge you with an understanding that God wants you to be strong. God wants you to stand strong. I know inside you there is that strength that God has packed in your inside and God is cheering for you, saying my child, you can do this, you can overcome, you can emerge victorious and that is what is apportioned for you as a child of God. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, the Bible says, fear not for I am with you. Fear not for I am with you. Again, we see an assurance from the word of God. Fear not for I am with you. Be 
be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my right hand of righteousness. Hear me Namibia. Hear me Okahanja and wherever you are connecting from that the Lord God is saying do not be afraid. I am your God. I am with you. I am with you. An assurance of the presence of God. An assurance of the presence of God. So look down or no look down, the presence of God is assured for your life. Be not dismayed for I am your God. God assures you that he is by your side. He is on your side. He is there to defend you and he is there to help you. He says, I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So what assurance are we getting? An assurance that my strength does not come from the east or from the west. My strength comes from God. God is going to help me. God is going to strengthen me. And God is going to be with me in the midst of the pandemic. He says, I will help you. I will uphold you. I will lift you up with my right hand of righteousness. Maybe you are in the sick bed and you are saying, I'm so much in pain. I can't breathe properly. Well, I want you to know that God, even this particular moment, is saying I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will lift you. I will lift you up with the right hand of righteousness. So I see God lifting you up. I see him raising you up from that pain, raising you up from that depression, raising you up from that frustration. He has assured that he will give us the strength, he will help us, and he will be there for us. Jesus Christ had a conversation with his disciples, and he makes this statement in John 8 verse 12, and he says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but we will have the life, the light of life. All right? So we see here the Bible says, I am the light. Jesus Christ says, I am the light. Even when there is a pandemic, when things are bad, when things are complicated, Jesus says, I am the light, and whoever uh, finds me, whoever follows me, will not walk in darkness. There is darkness that has swept the world. There is darkness that is in our streets. There is darkness that is in our homes. But God is saying, he is the light. Jesus assures us of his light. He says, if you receive this light, you will not walk in darkness. Yes, there is a pandemic. There is all these turbulences. There is all these troubles. You will not walk walk in these turbulences. You will not walk in darkness because the light of God fills your heart. And everywhere you go, you're moving in the light. We sing songs and saying, walking in the light of God. And this is the season that that song should begin to resonate in our lives. This is the time that this song should begin to rise as a banner. And we are saying, I am walking in the light of God. I am walking in the light of God. I am walking in the light of God. Child of God, the light of God has been extended are you willing to receive this light? Because the Bible says, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. So you will begin to walk in the light of God. The darkness of pandemic, the darkness of sickness that is sweeping over the nations, you will be able to walk in the light of God. Yes, even that fear that you have that uh, uh, maybe it's the mark of the beast or may maybe it's the end times. Well, the word of God assures you and me that now that we have Jesus in our hearts, we will not walk in darkness. We will not be able to experience darkness. Romans 5, verse 2 to 5, the Bible says, through Jesus Christ, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace which in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope and hope does not put to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So first thing this scripture says, you have access by faith to the grace of God. You have access. I have access 
by faith to the grace of God. And that is consolation that brings joy to my heart. I have access into the presence of God. I have access to God with by faith, I rejoice, I stand because of the access that I have. And the Bible says, I rejoice even in my sufferings, I rejoice knowing that suffering will produce endurance. In other words, even when I suffer, I will continue to stand. Even when I suffer, I continue to find my placement in God. And the Bible further says, and hope does not put to shame or hope does not fail. Continue hoping, child of God. Continue hoping, continue holding on to God. The Bible says, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been extended to us through the Holy Spirit, has been poured in our hearts that we experience that love, the love of God that never fails. Psalms 27 verse 1 and verse 2 and verse 13 and 14, the Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage and wait for the Lord. What is the Bible saying? The Lord is saying, he is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? We are living in the times of fear. People are afraid of the pandemic. People are afraid of the vaccine. People are afraid of all sorts of things uh, that are going on around our time. But here the Bible says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. In other words, my life anchors in the Lord. My life anchors in the stronghold, which is God. I shall not be afraid. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord. In other words, I will experience the goodness of God. I will see the goodness of God even in the midst of the pandemic. I will be able to see the goodness of God. Further, the Bible says, wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. What does that mean? It means that we will not panic. It means that in the midst of confusion, we will still wait upon the Lord. We will be strong and continue to wait. Our hearts will find courage. Our hearts will remain strong in the Lord. So continue to be strong in the Lord. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised for those who love him. What is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying, blessed is the man, blessed is you who remains steadfast under trial. We are tried. We are going through very difficult trials. The news is actually saying the times in which we are living, these are times that have never been experienced on this earth. Well, we are experiencing it, and we know that what is going to see us through in this time of the, the pandemic is the, the steadfastness of remaining in the presence of God as we go through the trials. We will remain steadfast, for we know that when we remain steadfast, God shall cause us to stand the test of time. God shall cause us to stand the test of time. Child of God, these are difficult times in which we are living, but the grace of God is so sufficient for you. John 16, verse 33. Listen to what uh, Jesus uh, promised his disciples. Something amazing. He says, I, I, I have said these things to you, that in me you will have peace. In me you will have peace. Imagine the disciples, they are under fear, they are panicking, they don't know what is going on, and Jesus just stops and begins to speak to them. I have said these things to you. That in me you may have peace, in this world you will have tribulations, you will have troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Wow, we need Jesus Christ 
in our lives in order for us to experience that victory that he said he has overcome the world he said in me you will have peace in the midst of the pandemic i will have peace in the lord i will have peace in god because he says in this world there will be tribulations but i take heart because he has overcome and therefore i will overcome and I close with uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 to 4. The Bible says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. So what does that mean? It means that our Father God he is the Father of comp compassion. He is the father of compassion. That means that maybe you are there in that sick bed. You have lost somebody. You have lost your loved ones. And you are so broken. God is a father of compassion. He feels compassionate about you. He want to show compassion to you. He want to show you that he loves you. And he will still be there for you. And the Bible further says, And God comforts us. He comforts us with all comforts in all our troubles. All right? So it says he comforts those who are troubled. So when we go through troubles, we are assured of the presence of God, comforting us and giving us the strength to say, you will stand, you will pull through, you will make it. My friend, in these times that we are living, we can only make it with God on our side. We can only make it when we have surrendered our hearts to the Lord, where we say, God, I want to allow you to come in my heart. I want to allow you to lead me. I want to allow you to take charge. There's so many things that has taken place, so many things that has happened. We can only find understanding when we position ourselves in God. The Bible says, Jesus Christ as give, is the light. He has given that light to us. Once you receive the light, you will never walk in darkness. And I want to give you this opportunity. Maybe you want to invite Jesus as your savior. You are saying, I, I, enough is enough. I've danced, I've clubbed, I've done all sorts of things. It is time for me to find my way back to the Lord. What if I die today? What if I die tomorrow? That is the question that you should be asking yourself. Because if you die today, you die tomorrow and you are not ready, you will, you will go to hell. You will go to hell. There is no apology when it comes to that statement. You will go to hell. So it is a place where you come and you are saying, I want to walk in the light. So I want to pray with somebody. If you are there, you are saying, I want to invite Jesus. I want you to just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I open my heart. Come into my life. Today, I choose life. I choose to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I realize that you died for my sins. And you rose again to give me victory over sin and over temptation. Therefore, Lord, I pray that help me to walk this walk, to love you as you have loved me first. Thank you for your salvation and thank you for your second chance that you have extended to me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know that from now on, God considers you as his own. He embraces you as his child. The Bible says in uh, John chapter uh, 1 verse 12, those who received him were given power to become children of God. So you prayed that prayer, you have been given power to be called a child of God. And as you have prayed and Maybe you are sick, you are feeling sick in your body, you are overwhelmed by what is happening. Like I said, we are living in chaotic, uh, traumatic, and confused time. These are three things that has entered in our streets, and we don't know how to deal with these things. I want to just say a prayer across. Wherever you are, believing that God will stretch his hand upon your life in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters out there, saying that, Lord... These are times where people are experiencing trauma, where people are experiencing chaos, where people are experiencing confusion. I pray that, Lord, your hand, the Bible says, is not short to save. May you save your people. May you touch this nation, touch the nations, touch that home, touch that person in the hospital, that person isolated at home, that person listening, maybe in the car, in their living room, wherever they are listening from. Lord, I pray that touch and touch and let your healing, let your restoration be extended upon our lives 
and upon our streets. We believe, Lord God, that we will eventually come back to normal. Life will be restored. Everything will be restored by your grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with our hearts full of thanks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for having joined us. And I believe that uh, God has blessed you. And I trust that uh, your life will never be the same. And listen to me. Uh, those of you that belong to Victory Family Center, their bank accounts and the contact numbers are scrolling at the bottom here. Send your tithes, your offerings into the bank account uh, as church, as obligations. We need to pay rentals. We need to pay all the expenses that needs to be paid. So make sure that uh, even as we are at home, we are to do what we are supposed to do. Paying our tithes, our offerings, just deposit into that bank account or send to the mobile money so that the money can be put into the church account. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Till next Sunday. Nothing can take away your love from me. Nothing.